Hi guys, my name is Talini Fashanti, um, and in this video today I'm going to be showing you how to use two very helpful tools to do your own theory crafting and your own planning of routes. This is how you figure out how to level your submarines efficiently. It's also how you figure out how to make gil on your own. I've been talking about a lot um, in my previous videos the nitty gritty of submarining and what it entails. Basically submarining is um, they're like retainer ventures basically just with a lot more complicated aspects to them different stats different routes they're like retainer ventures on steroids is how i like to think of them um so there's very helpful tools here that allow you to figure out how to plan your routes effectively this is probably going to be one of the more boring videos because we're kind of just looking at some chrome tabs today but the information in here is going to be really helpful when you're figuring out how to make gill on your own um, as well as figuring out how to effectively level your submarines. So right now I'm showing Mogship. Mogship is built by Discs, who is um, a user on the submarine discord who built this basically workhorse calculator that really does everything in one that you need for calculator. So the first thing I'm going to show you is your XP calculator. And what this is really good for is planning routes to figure out how to effectively level your submarines. So default, it'll show you a rank 1 submarine with all shark parts here. So this, when you're first starting out, will be what your submarine looks like when you build your very first one. And it shows you the possible routes that you can take as well as their efficiency and you can sort this by different things. Right now the default is to sort it by EXP per minute. You can also sort it by time, the EXP gained, the rank required. So basically this shows you that at level 1 you can have four different routes. And at level 1 the most efficient route that you could take would be to take Ivory Shoals to Deep Sea Site 1. So let's just change up a few things so you can see how this will work. So let's say I have a rank 54 submarine, so I just type in the rank here, rank 54, and I'm just going to leave it at using all shark parts. Um, but I don't have the Sea of Ash unlocked, and I don't have the Sea of Jade unlocked yet. I still want to see what the most efficient route is going to be for me at 54 if I exclude those zones. And you can have must include maps. The only map that's going to be available to me if I exclude these two is going to be this uh, deep sea site, which is the very first map. And then I can also check off what sectors I want to exclude. So you can check off here if there are specific sectors you don't have unlocked yet and you don't want them to show in the table, or sectors you want to include. So hypothetically here, I want to make sure I include the Rimilala Trench Bottom because in this hypothetical situation I'm trying to unlock the Sunken Vault so I can move on to the Sea of Ash because the Sunken Vault is unlocked from the Rimilala Trench Bottom here. and. It, once you unlock Sunken Vault, you run it once, and that starts unlocking the Sea of Ash zone. So I'm just going to do this, and I'm going to hit search. And it's going to give me two sectors that I can do with that Rank 54 submarine. Two routes, rather, rather than sectors. And it'll show me that I can either hit the Rimalala Trench Bottom by itself, or I can send it to Deep Sea 1 and then Rimalala Trench Bottom. But just hitting Rim Rimalala by itself is more efficient because the EXP per minute it gives me is higher. So I'm just going to do a couple more scenarios with this really quickly. I'm going to type in here rank 35. I'm going to plug in a pretty popular speed build. This is a speed build that a lot of people use to speed up the leveling process because it has more range and higher speed. I'm just going to click these off. So it'll show you this. CSUW is the abbreviation for the build. That means you're using a coelacanth bridge, a shark stern, an unky bow, 
and a whale bridge. So you can see that at rank 35 this type of build is going to give me 125 speed. I'm just going to click search. It's going to spit a bunch of routes at me. Um, and it only spits back 100 at a time. So what it's going to be able to show you with this is that the most efficient route is going to be hitting these four sectors in this order. The order matters because, as we talked about in my previous video, depending on what order you hit certain sectors, it's more efficient or less efficient because of the way the sectors connect to each other. So if I were sending a rank 35 submarine out for the most efficient EXP that's equipped with CSUW, I would want to send it to this zone, this set of zones up here which is Neolith Island to Deep Sea 4 to Kanayama to Komura. So let's just one, run through one more scenario. I'm going to pretend my sub is rank 79. I'm going to search. So it's going to spit out more builds for me. And it's going to show me that the most efficient one is going to be Sea of Ash 1, Smuggler's Knot, Lone Glove, Koto Isle, Glutton's Belly at this rank if I'm using CSUW. What happens if I change it to All Shark? And then I hit search. It's going to spit out a different set of sectors for me and it's going to tell me to go on this route, which you can see here, which is south, north, three, two, four. So that's a big difference there in terms of the EXP per minute that you're getting, depending on how you change the build. It's a thousand EXP per minute with that route. You have all shark parts. If you're doing CSUW, you can get significantly more EXP per minute there. So that's how that type of build speeds up the leveling process. You're able to send it on longer trips, higher level trips, faster than you would be able to with using standard shark parts. That being said, it's not mandatory to make a build like CSUW to speed up the leveling process, but a lot of people find it helpful. So now that we've explored the EXP calculator, there's also the maps here. There's different types of flowcharts as well that exist, and you can find links to those in the submarine discord, but at a glance you can see here if you are starting out and you're just trying to unlock the map, that depending on what sectors you hit, you have an RNG chance to unlock different zones. One of the most important things to do when you're first starting out with submarining in your workshop is to get as fast as possible to the zones that unlock your second, third, and fourth subs. And those are Unidentified Derelict, Wreckage of Discovery, and Purgatory. So with those, you'll kind of see how the chain goes. Okay, if I need to unlock Derelict, it's unlocked by Deep Sea 3. In order for me to unlock Deep Sea 3, I have to hit Deep Sea 1, and Deep Sea 1 is the level 1 zone. So with those, you can kind of see how it forms a path there. And there are flowcharts and images that you can reference, and you can find those on the Submarine Discord, which I will have a link to in the description of this video. It also has the same thing for Sea of Ash, so if you're trying to fill out your Sea of Ash map and get to Sea of Jade, Sea of Jade is the latest map, and this is where you can find items like Ben Ben Stone, uh, the Portrait of Gestal, the Damaged Icebox, which are all... Uh, items that you might want to get for yourself or get for your FC. That's where you can find these in the Sea of Jade, um, but the Sea of Jade also has very high breakpoint requirements, and those items now are not as valuable on the market board as they were when they first launched. So the last thing I'm going to show you is the ranks here, and this is just a chart that shows you um, at what rank, what capacity you'll have, and how much EXP you need to get to the next rank. What it will also show you as you get down into higher than level 50 is those bonus stats that we talked about. So these are the bonus stats that you're going to have at each rank above 50, and it's cumulative. It's not showing you how much you add per rank. It's showing you what those bonus stats are as you move forward, and you'll see that they increase here. 
as you get down to rank 90 where they cap out and you have these very high bonus stats that make it a lot easier for you to hit certain breakpoints with different builds. So now that we've looked at all that, we're going to go over and look at the builds calculator. With the builds calculator, what this allows you to do is it allows you to build a route. And after you select a route, you can then find an optimal build for hitting that route. And you can sort by uh, what breakpoints you want to hit. You can also narrow down the builds by what rank you want to be. Um, and you can also check off here uh, different parts that you may or may not want to use. So if you're making a particular build and you want to reuse some parts that you already have on hand and you don't want to make certain parts, um, you can just check off whether or not they're included in the calculation. So with that, I'm going to show you how to theorycraft a little bit and make some different builds. And in conjunction with that, I'm going to show you Mystic Spirits, Airship and Submersible Loot and Builder. So this is a spreadsheet that Mystic Spirit, who's um, a moderator on the Submarine Discord, put together. And it has some very valuable resources within it. The thing I end up looking at the most is the sub loot chart. And the sublute chart shows you all the different things you can get from each of the zones. So with that, it also includes what your stats need to be in order to get um, those different types of loot. So if you're looking here, the chart has the name of the sector, what that sector unlocks, and then the breakpoints in here. So T2 and T3 are surveillance breakpoints. So if it says T2, that's the minimum surveillance to have a chance to get loot from Tier 2. And if you're below that breakpoint, it will reward only loot from Tier 1. Tier 3 is the minimum breakpoint you need to have a chance to get loot from Tier 3. And again, surveillance is an RNG stat. So you're, if you have a sub that hits the breakpoint for t Tier 3, it's not going to guarantee that you're going to get Tier 3 loot from a particular sector. Um, it's an RNG roll like anything else, but you won't be able to get Tier 3 loot if you can only hit Tier 2 or Tier 1. So the normal and optimal here is Retrieval stats. Um, so Retrieval is a stat that refers to uh, how much quantity of a particular loot that you can get back. It doesn't apply to some types of loot. Um, it def doesn't apply to uh, loot from very high sectors like minions, furniture, things like that, um, certain crafting materials, where when those drop, they only ever drop one at a time, regardless of how much retrieval you have. What retrieval is useful for is farming submarine exclusive materials. Um, I talked about camisite, Cryptomeria logs, pure titanium ore. Retrieval is very important if you want to get large quantities of that type of loot. And then the last statistic is favor. And favor is a stat that allows you to have a chance to get two items from a sector. Once you hit a favor breakpoint, it's a relatively low chance that you're going to miss, but it essentially allows you to have a second crack at a zone. So if we can see for zone one, um, the favor breakpoint is 70, so if your favor is 70 or above, you have a chance to have a second crack at the loot for Sector 1. So you could hit Sector 1 and get T3 loot on a 1 roll, and then you could on the second roll get Tier 1 loot if you fail your surveillance roll. So that's how that works. And as we'll go down into the later sectors, you'll be able to see that those breakpoints become increasingly high in terms of what they require. And when we get all the way down, just scrolling really fast here, down to these late stage Sea of Jade sectors where you're trying to get things like Ben Ben Stone, Portrait of Gestalt, Damaged Icebox, these types of items. Uh, it's going to be much more difficult to hit those breakpoints without the use of modified parts. So 
looking at all of that, the last thing I want to say is that once you hit a break point, having extra of a certain stat isn't going to do anything for you. It's a break point, um, like a hard break point. So one of the things with airships is that it increases your chance to have um, a higher roll if you exceed the break point. Um, with surveillance, it's the same thing with favor from what I understand, but with submarines, it's a hard break point. So let's say you're going for something like the Abroader Otter from the Isle of Sacrament, and you have a submarine with 220 surveillance, but you're also looking at a build that only has 190 surveillance. Both of those are going to have the same chance to bring back an Abroader Otter from the Isle of Sacrament, the one with higher surveillance isn't going to give you an increased chance to get it. So let's make um, a couple builds just for funsies. So you can see how the calculator works in conjunction with using the loot spreadsheet to target loot. So the first build we're going to make, we're going to make an Arulia polyp farmer this hypothetical situation, you have someone in your FC who wants to make a bunch of jellyfish lamps and uh, each one uses an Aurelia polyp so they want 20 or so Aurelia polyps. So you're going to look in here and one of my favorite tips is to look at the um, lowest rank zone possible that drops a particular item in order to farm it because odds are you're going to be able to meet the breakpoints for that zone much more cheaply, much more easily, and it's going to save you some gill um, on making parts if you can use cheaper types of parts. So if I'm farming Aurelia polyps, I can see here that it drops from the deep sea site 3, it also drops from the umbrella narrow, and I say, well, maybe I can add a third zone, okay, cobalt shoals. So let's say I want to hit those three sectors and I want to make a build that's going to do that. So I'm going to click over to Mog Ship. I'm going to select Deep Sea Site 3, Umbrella Narrow, Cobalt Shoals. I'm going to select this route. Now, in this also hypothetical situation, I don't have a max rank sub yet. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm not going to use an exact rank. But what we're going to do is we're going to go minimum rank and my highest rank sub is rank 60. We're going to do that. But I'm willing to use any parts I want. So since the Aurelia polyp is a tier 3 drop, we need to hit the high surveillance break point. Retrieval doesn't matter because you're not going to get multiple Aurelia polyps for one trip. But we want to have a second crack in getting Aurelia polyps from that trip. So I'm just going to hit search, and it's going to tell me in speed order all the builds that can do that. So I'm looking at this here, and one of the tips that I like to have for making a particular farming type of build is that you want to have it come back in intervals that are going to be convenient. So we're all human, we all have lives, we aren't all on the game 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You gotta sleep sometime. And if your sub isn't wet, it's not making money. So you want to have it come back at a time that's convenient, and it's also better to have it come back uh, at regularly scheduled intervals. So you're not, you know, checking subs one day at 7 a.m. and then, oh shoot, because by the time they come back, they're going to come back at 3 p.m. I'm going to be at work. I'm not going to be able to check them until late at night. That's no good. So I like to stick to 24 hour intervals. Um, at worst case scenario, you can look for something with a 12 hour type of interval. I also like to build in what's called negative drift. So if for whatever reason I'm eating dinner when my subs come back, I know that if I wait an hour, two, or even 30 minutes to check my subs, it's not going to mess up my timers and make them drift all over the place. So with this, I can see that at rank 60, if I make a sub that's a modified coelacanth hole, modified shark stern, a modified unky bow, and a modified coelacanth bridge, I can hit these breakpoints and it's going to come back in 23 hours, 31 minutes, so I can check it at the same time every day. 
that's great. But what if I don't want to use modified parts? I'm just going to go through here and I'm going to check off these modified parts because I don't want to use them. I don't want to make them. So now it's going to change the type of build that I'm going to use. And any build that I make without modified parts is going to put me at one day, three hours, 50 minutes at the very fastest, which is kind of a wonky interval. I don't really want to use that. So I'm just going to look through here and see if I can find something that's at like 36 hour interval. I'm not. So let's say, okay, I already have a coelacanth hole lying around. What happens if I include that? Okay, that speeds it up a little. Great. I also have a modified Unkyu stern sitting around. Let's see what happens if I include that. And get it down to one day, one hour, 35 minutes. So you just kind of mess with it until you find something that works for you, works, what works for your budget, um, and what you want to do with it. So I'm going to just reset the stats. Do this. So I'm resetting everything. And then I'm going to reset the selection of my routes. So the next type of build that we're going to make is the material farmer. This hypothetical scenario, you say, okay, I've seen on the market board and I've spent my own gill on it. And I've seen that pure titanium ore is selling for a lot and cryptomeria logs are selling for a lot. So I want to farm that and I want to sell it. So if we look, those materials don't drop until the Sea of Ash, but they drop from the first two zones, which is great because those are the lowest rank zones in the Sea of Ash. So it's going to be easier for us to hit these types of breakpoints than something in, say, the Sea of Jade, where if you go down here, sure, the Isle of Sacrament drops Cryptomeria lives as well, but it also has much higher breakpoints required. So I say, okay, let's hit these first two sectors of the Sea of Ash. So in Mogship, I'm going to click over to Sea of Ash and I'm going to go South Isle, Wreckage of the Windwalker, and I'm going to select it. And you can see that the range here that's required is really, really low. So that's going to give us more flexibility in terms of when we're choosing parts to dump stuff into other stats. So I'm going to select that route. And with this one, I'm going to say, you know what, my subs are rank 90 already. I don't need to mess around with putting in lower rank. I want high surveillance because cryptomeria logs and pure titanium ore are both T3 loot from that sector and I want optimal retrieval because unlike the Aurelia polyps, if I have optimal retrieval I'm going to get more logs and more ore which means more money. And yes I want to be able to double dip because that is going to give me more chances to get stuff. So I'm just going to search. Okay, I've got a lot of builds coming back here and these are all really, really fast. So all of these are coming in at under the 24 hour mark with that. So that's good because it makes it more convenient for you to be able to check stuff and that way you're not getting weird intervals where, for example, it's one day, five hours, and your submarine is coming back at a different time every day. So let's say, okay, look at all these builds and they're all coming in super fast. That's awesome. But I don't really want to have to buy Cryptomeria lumber and pure titanium plates or the logs and ore in order to farm that stuff. So that's weird. It's like spending the money to get money. So I'm just going to unselect all the modified parts and see what that gives me. And at rank 90, you can still do it in under 24 hours. So all these builds here, all the builds above this one, you're going to be able to farm that route in 24 hours or less. It's going to come back at close to the same time every day. And you're going to be able to hit all the applicable breakpoints, which is awesome. So if we see here, 
maybe this is the one I want to build. Remember when I said whale parts were a meme? They're not always a meme. They have some use in some uh, different types of builds. So like this one in particular here uses a whale hull, a whale stern, a shark bow, and a coelacanth bridge. I already have the shark bow because I used it to level with, so that's great. That's one less part I need to build. So I'm just going to do that. Or if I look at this one here, it's SYSC. I already have shark hull, shark bow. So it's a two part swap to get me over with a Sildra stern and a coelacanth bridge. Still comes in at under 24 hours at rank 90. Hits all my breakpoints, cheap to make, and I can start farming that stuff that I want. So we're going to look at one more build. We're going to do a Sea of Jade farmer. Um, and with the Sea of Jade, like I said, it has those uh, in-demand minions, furniture type items, crafting materials that people want right now. So in this scenario, I want to farm Ben Ben stones. I want to farm the portrait of Gestal, which is, um, it's a painting of a dog. I don't really see the appeal myself, but some people really want it for whatever reason. I'm not going to yuck your yum. And then I also want to farm the damaged ice box. And the damaged ice box is an ingredient that you can use to make an ice box, which is a furniture item. It's a little fridge that opens up. It's cute. It has mist. Um, and it looks nice if you're making a build with a kitchen. Ben Ben Stone is a little minion uh, that looks like a pyramid. So these are the three things that I want to farm. So I need to be able to hit Worm's Rest, Sea of Jade 6, Devil's Crypt. I'm going to the Sea of Jade. I'm just going to check off those three sectors. Select this route. Now with this one, if I try to hit all three breakpoints, my ship says, no, <laughs> you cannot do it because um, with these high level zones, even with all the bonus stats, even with full modified parts, you aren't going to be able to hit surveillance breakpoints, retrieval breakpoints, and a favor breakpoint. And retrieval doesn't affect those items anyway because they only drop in singles. So we're just going to say, okay, I'm going to toss the retrieval breakpoint out the window. We just want to be able to hit T3 loot. And we want to be able to double dip so we have a better chance of getting that loot. So I'm just going to search and it spits out these builds at me. So if I want to farm those three sectors, I have these three types of builds here that I can do. And if I do those three sectors, there's basically two builds that I can make. I can make a CUIC with some parts modified or not. Or I can make a CUYY with some parts modified or not. That's about it. That's all that's going to be able to hit that. So with that, I'm going to look at my time intervals and I'm going to say, okay, I'm farming these three sectors and I want it to be at a logical interval that makes sense for me. Two days, three hours. That's kind of weird because it's going to drift all over the place. But if I make CUYY, it's going to be two days, 21 hours, four minutes. That's pretty close to a three day interval, kind of one of those things where I can set it and forget it. Um, so I would send my sub on this route, which is Worm's Rest, Devil's Crypt, Sea of Jade 6, using this build here, which is a modified Sea Lake Canth Hull, modified Unky Stern, modified Sildra Bow, modified Sildra Bridge. And this is an expensive build, but it's going to be something that's going to be able to hit surveillance breakpoints for uh, any zone and it's also going to be able to hit the favorite breakpoint for any zone. So let's say I want to do this on the cheap and I don't want to spend that much. Let's see if taking off the favorite breakpoint gives me anything else. Okay great. I don't want to use modified parts either so I'm just going to unselect all of these. Let's see if I can hit three, these three zones with any type of build and I can some unmodified builds here that will allow me with enough, will leave me with enough surveillance to be able to still get T3 loot from these sectors, but I'm not going to be double dipping. Um, definitely not going to be hitting that retrieval breakpoint, but it's going to be a lot less expensive. And you can also play with different routes. So let's say, okay, I want to hit Worm's Rest. 
all I want is Ben Ben Stone. I'm going to reset my selection here. Select this route. Still have all my modified parts unchecked because I don't want to use them. I want high surveillance. Favor doesn't matter. Retrieval doesn't matter. I'm doing this on the cheap and I just want to hit that one zone so I'm going to search. And you'll see that there are a lot of different builds here that you can use. And I say OK. I don't want to use shark parts at all. I don't want to use whale parts at all because they're annoying. I don't want to use soldier parts at all. All I want to use is coelacanth and ugu. So it's going to come back with these three different builds. And like I said, sometimes the time intervals are wonky. But here you can really narrow down and pinpoint what you want to use, what makes sense to you in terms of what you're building and what you're using for your FC. So now that we've done all that, um, one of the things that you can look into, I really encourage people to try out theory crafting for themselves um, because it's a fun little mental exercise. You can also find um, niche markets that aren't the same things that everybody is farming. Um, people tend to all kind of do the same thing uh, because somebody else has already done the work. But if you look at the airship submersible loot spreadsheet, you can maybe find niche markets for things that people aren't farming as much and farm those. And you can fill a hole in the market that other people aren't doing at the moment. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you say, okay, Talini, that's awesome that you've taught me how to do all that, but really I just want to know what's the best way to get this particular thing. Uh, the submarine discord has done a lot of theory crafting over the years and right now they have recommendations for a lot of common builds that you can do um, to farm different things so they've done the work on those late stage sea of jade sectors to give you something that can get all those minions and furniture that you want they've also done the work on farming things like cryptobaria logs pure titanium ore and camasite so all those different types of items and you can find all that stuff there so with all that if you have any questions about how to theory craft or the different types of things that you should be doing to kind of maximize your gains when you're theory crafting and planning routes feel free to leave them in the comments i'm also going to have links to Mogship as well as this loot spreadsheet i'm also going to include links to the submarine discord and links to pepper's guide I talked about Pepper's Guide before, but Pepper's Guide is a really wonderful resource for uh, answering any questions that you may have about submarines, and Pepper is a very nice person as well. So thanks for watching, and have a good day.